trusting in the Lord. No matter what I see, I will trust in the Lord. Until I Trust it. 
Venga. Aleluya. Oh. I need somebody need to help me do that. Somebody just grab back and say, oh. oh. Come on, that's a war cry. We tearing down some strongholds this morning. Somebody grab back and say, oh. He's not a man. He 
should lie and not the son of man he should repent when he said it he still said it if he said it he's gonna do it heal your body deliver you bring you out without a doubt go back yes he is save the child yes he is deliver from drugs yes he will you found believe it you need help Believe it. You need joy. Believe it. You need strength. Believe it. You need help. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Somebody needs to believe God today. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. God's gonna do what He said. It might be taking a long time, but believe God.
of God. If not for your your prayer, come on, lift those hands up and just begin to thank the Lord. Come on, lift those hands. Come on, lift those hands. There's an awesome presence in here today. Come on. Come on, sing that verse. Where would I be? Where would I be? In the for your grace. Come on, where would I be? Come on, lift those hands and say it. Where? I want you to think about how far he's brought you from. Come on, say it. Where would I be? Think about how far he's brought you. Think about where you could have been today. But the grace of God, the grace of God, where? Come on, tell him. I am not for your grace. One more time, where would I be? Lift those voices up and tell them where. where would I be? If not for. If you love them, clap those hands and give Jesus a shout of praise. If you love him, give him a shot of praise for the glory that's in the house. Oh, come on, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Oh, he's awesome. Just before you take your seat, just tell three people, the grace of God has kept me. Come on, the grace. Come on, I know you think you kept yourself, but the grace of God has kept me now after you get to your third person on your way down to your seat give jesus a shout of praise one more time out of your belly today come on grace come on grace shout if it wasn't for grace if you know that grace picked you up grace found you what a blessing it is to be in the house of the lord how many people are glad you're in the right place this morning I said, how many people are glad that you are in the right place this morning? Come on, if you're glad to be in the right place, put those hands together and thank God for allowing you to be in the right place. I tell you, what an awesome anointing. What an awesome anointing. You are a part of an anointed house. Amen. I mean, the choir didn't even get a chance to sing. It was just so much power. But when you come in expectation of God to do something awesome, he never disappoints. Do I hear amen from somebody? He never disappoints. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, God never disappoints. Amen. And today your coming truly has not been in vain. And tell somebody the best is yet to come. Oh, you're going to leave here so full of the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to leave here, I believe, in overflow. God's going to do something awesome in your life today that has never been done before. We thank God for our apostle here today, John Boyd. Let's give the man of God. And the woman of God, Mother Boyd, a great big hand clap. We're so thankful for them today. And just before the apostle comes, I, I want to give you an opportunity to sow into this good soil. And I want to ask the ushers to prepare themselves at this moment. One of my favorite scriptures when it comes to giving, the challenge. He said, the young man, as a matter of fact, I want to look back at the ruler. He said, he saved unto him which Jesus said, thou shalt 
do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery. He goes on to all these things. Then he tells him something very powerful. The young man saith unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? He said, there was something that the man said, I've kept all these things, but he wanted to know what was he lacking. Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell what thou hast and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure. Somebody say treasure. In heaven. And then he says, and come and follow me. This man had amassed great wealth, had kept the law down to the letter, but he knew he was lacking something. And Jesus told him, the one thing that you're lacking is that you have not yet given enough to the poor. It's a powerful thing. He has this great conversation with Jesus, and Jesus could have said anything under the sun. But he tells him, the one thing I need you to do is give to the poor. So today I want you to get a seed that is appropriate. This ministry reaches out to those that are in need on a daily basis. Every day someone is calling the office with a need. And we thank God because of your seed, we can be the arms, the hands, the feet, the eyes, and the voice of Jesus Christ. Amen? Your seed makes that possible. But guess what? When the ministry gets blessed because you are a part of sowing into this soil, you also get blessed. So I'm asking everyone that will get at least a seat of $10 in your hand today. I always ask people to get at least a seat of 10. If the Lord touch your heart to give 20, 50, 100 to the poor, that's a blessed thing. God will increase your borders when you sow to the poor. He said when you give to the poor, you only loan to who? You loan to the Lord. This rich young ruler had everything. He had kept the law, but he had not learned yet to give to the poor. So after we have done everything, if we don't take the anointing that we have experienced here today and put it into action and help those who are less fortunate than we are, then all we've done is come and have a good time. But we have not transcended this anointing into an action. And today, here's your opportunity to take this anointing and transform it into an action. Get your seat in your hand today. Hold it up to the Lord. Everyone get a seat in your hand. Father, we thank you right now for the sower. You cut covenant to the sower. You said when we sow seed to the poor, praise is released in the atmosphere. You said when we sow seed to the poor, someone says God is good. We thank you that this is not just money, but it's praise. We help produce praise through our seed and sowing to the poor. And we count it a blessing and a privilege to be a sower because you always provide seed to the sower. In Jesus' name, Someone say, amen. Amen. The ushers may serve you at this time. Remember the Bible says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Why is this offering important? Because he says when you give to the poor, before you have a need, I will cut the need off. Did somebody hear what I said here? Before you have a need, he says, I'll, cut, I'll stand between you and the need. How many times God has stood between you and the need? The need never got to you. You never even had to worry about the need because God provided for the need. He is obligated to do that for those who give to the poor. So this is not just about sowing in faith. This is about a covenant. Somebody say a covenant. God is in covenant with the sower. God is in covenant with the sower. So thank you not Robert today to plant a seed. Because there are many times that somebody had to plant a seed into our lives. How many people remember the time somebody had to plant a seed into your life? Come on. Somebody walked up to you planting a seed. It could have been a verbal seed. It could have been a financial seed. Amen. It could have been a seed of groceries, but God used someone to plant a seed in your life. Amen. And you thank God that they were obedient to the seed that was planted in your life. So today, I want you to be obedient to that seed that God has planted. How many people are expecting something great to just take over your life for the remaining days of this year? Come on. Somebody say, I'm going to end this year strong and I'm going to end this year wealthy. Come on. Y'all saying it like you don't believe it. Say, I'm going to end this year strong. And I'm going to end this year wealthy. Amen. Amen. You got to make yet your declaration. Now, also, we want to remind you that if you have any children from the ages of uh, two to six, they can join our ABC church up on the second level. Please feel free to uh, take them up there. They're in great hands. Uh, they're going to be learning about the word of God while you're down here getting blessed. Amen. We thank God for New Greater Bethel that meets the whole family. Amen. 
our desire is to make sure the whole body, the whole family is ministered to. And also, if you are a young person, if you uh, our champion's age is 7 to 12 and our giant's age is 13 to 19 and you're in here, we're going to be having service next door in the multi-purpose room. So when I leave here, I'm going to be going next door with the youth and we're going to uh, take this fire that's here. We're going to throw some over there in that next room next door. Amen. So if you're a young person, meet me over there uh, in about five minutes and we're going to let the Lord do his thing. This is a day and time that we need Jesus. Did you hear what I said? This is a day and time we need Jesus. We need him. I was telling Pastor on yesterday, I said I was watching something on the Word Network, and they interviewed a gentleman who had, he has a, a gay church in Atlanta, and they introduced him and his first man. And I said, God, what is going on? Now, this wasn't on a secular channel. This was on the Word Network. Church, you got to pray. The Bible says if God did not shorten the time, no one would be saved. If he didn't shorten the time, no one would be saved. This is a day and age you got to know the word from cover to cover. Come on here, somebody, and live every bit of it. You got to make sure that you are pouring this word into your children. Come on here, and they know what the gospel says. Amen? So we got a lot of work to enable. We got work to do. That after we do all of this, we got to make sure that we are living. The Bible says that we are living epistles. Amen. So every chance that we have to sow seed, every chance we have to be a blessing or to speak a kind word to someone, be that living epistle. Come on here, somebody. Time is too short to be angry. Hello. Time is too short to be envious. Life is too short to be mad at foolishness. Oh. We got but a short time on this earth. And you want to make every second count every minute and God says he wants us to love one another and make sure that we are doing this gospel from cover to cover amen now hold on to that tied envelope that you have in your hand later on a pastor is going to come he's going to collect that tied envelope this is a ministry that's built on tithing and we thank God for the seed that you are going to sow but this is the day and age we got to get ready we're going to do this and God's going to do some awesome things to the church I believe the church is about to see its greatest hour I believe it. I believe the church is about to see its greatest hour. Amen. If you have given, say, because I have sowed seed, I shall be blessed. Come on, say it. Because I have sowed seed, I shall be blessed. All right. Put your Bible down. Jump to your feet. We're getting ready to bring the man of God forth at this time. And don't worry. Y'all going to cool off in a minute. It's going to cool off. Y'all going to. And I see the fans just going, just, but we thank God for what he has done already. We praise God for the fresh wind that he's continuing to send in the house. Amen. And today you are not going to leave here disappointed. Whatever you came believing God for, get ready. It's about to make its way to you. I don't care what it looks like, what it sounds like. You are blessed. And so if you believe that just as the man of God prepares himself to come, I want you to put those hands together. I want you to give Jesus a praise as this man of God comes. Come on, put those hands together and give Jesus a shout of praise. another Sunday put your hands together and just Both hands, the Lord. Lord. I thank you. 
for faith in me to see one more Sunday. certainly give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give me all the volume you can give me. Because I hope this, the, the choir this morning that my voice is going to get out. I, I, was doing, I was doing all I could to push. I was pushing Phyllis. I was pushing her. Now, Phyllis, you got to push me. Uh, I, 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 Let's give God a hand clap for our music department. Brother. They almost made me believe that they wanted to have church today. We, there's nothing like good anointed singing. There's a difference between entertainment and, and making noise. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. We thank God for the anointing that God has placed upon this house. We give him all the glory. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I don't care how gifted you are, how intellectual you are. If you don't have no anointing, yokes don't get destroyed. Burden don't get lifted. Yeah, today I, I really don't have to preach because in the service already, folks have got delivered already. Between the praise service this morning and then the choir came on and they just took it to another level. And I don't care what your situation was. All you had to do was to receive it as it came in. The Lord took a mighty wing, and we thank God for his presence. Amen. And we thank God for each and every one that's present today. Amen. We are happy that I can look into your smiling faces today. And I did say smiling faces. And we can come and worship together in the presence of the Almighty Lord. And we certainly thank God for you. We thank God for all of our visitors and friends today. We welcome you into. <laughs> into God's house. That's the house of. Bethel is the house of God. But as I tell the people all the time, don't come to the. house and don't get the uh, God of the house, praise God. He's the one that's going to do it for you. So we welcome you here today. That everything that's lagging in your life will be fulfilled today by the presence of his Holy Spirit. And we certainly want you to enjoy yourself and be blessed of the Lord. We're certainly happy to have with us today, my daughter all the way from Baltimore. No, she's not in Baltimore anymore now. She's another part of Sister Lorraine Mack. Let's give God a big hand clap for her. And she got it, getting ready to release her album now, and it's going to come on pretty soon. And just before I. Just before I come today, she's going to come and bless us today with a selection. Praise God. Just for my God, just for coming. Come on.
they say they're contemporary, right? And they don't, you can't praise God. You ain't supposed to speak in tongues or nothing. So I'm sitting there like this. And I said, I don't know how much more I can take this. Because where I come from, we ain't ashamed to praise God. So I went there for like, what, six weeks? I was going nuts. And I said, God, how can you come into the house of God and not really praise him? So then I start thinking about y'all. I had to start imagining worship service. And I kept seeing people running around, rolling over. I kept seeing people, I kept seeing, the, the, you know, because, you know, y'all really praise God up in here. And so I, I had to see it and, and imagine that I was here to get a taste of where I come from. And so it got to the point where I started thinking about where God brought me from. Twelve years ago when I came in this church, I came in and Pastor Boy shook my hand and it was the day that my life changed. He said, I'm Pastor Boy. He established who he was. He set the authority up front and his relationship started and it has been the best thing that has ever happened to my life since Jesus. Don't get me wrong, I ain't perfect. If you think I'm perfect, you're thinking wrong because I'm not perfect. But it's been the most best relationship that has ever happened to my life since Jesus. He's never messed up his example. Never misrepresented himself as a leader. He always called me on the phone and validate me and tell me who I am. He always take time to pray with me. And he's still coming here and pastor all of y'all. I count that a privilege. And I thank God for it. You can go ahead and start the track. Turn it up. I got so much to thank God for so many wonderful blessings and so many open doors a brand Let me 
praise him, praise him. Come on, put them hands together and praise him. If he has brought you through anything, stand on your feet and give God a two-minute praise. Come on. If he has brought you through anything, put them hands together and act like he did it. Put them hands together and act like God did it. Yeah, boy, shot that that boy she did. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Praise him, praise him. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Before you sit back down, I know you're getting old and tired, but come on, hallelujah. Put your arm around to you and say, neighbor, God did it for me. Go ahead, tell him, God did it. Go ahead, give him the glory. Give him the glory. Say, God did it for me. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Let's give Evangelist Mac another great big hand clap. Praise God. Thank God. Thank God. She won was not just singing from notes, she was singing from experience. Come on, some how do you do? And you can tell the difference, brother, when somebody done been there. And they know who got them out. Come on, some how do you do? So many people tried to get me out, but thank God, God got me out. Oh, you're not talking to me. Come on, some how do you do? That's why I can praise him the way I do because I know I know who done it for me. Put your hand together one more time and bless him real good. And this day and this time that you've allotted of this house and your people and those that have come from far and near to be blessed through your word. Those that will be listening by radio today and watching television speak into the lives of every man, every woman, every boy and every girl. For the Holy Spirit knows all things let your word come forth mighty Lord at this time I relinquish this pulpit to you do what need to be done not just in the people but in me Lord I need you thank you for it God let every soul go out bless this day in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> and lift your hand and say, Lord, I thank you for it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many folks today, this is the first time you've been to the New Girl Bethlehem Church? Raise your hand if you're the first time visitor to it. All right. One, three. Yes, you've got a big hand clap for all the first time visitors. Wonderful, wonderful. We have a special gift we want to give you before you leave, so make sure you put that in their hand, praise God, and give them some reference on where we are, where we are going, and what God has assigned for us to do at this particular time. All right, I'm not going to keep you long. The older I get, the wiser I get. What well, it used to take me two hours to do, I can do it in 30 minutes now.
So uh, one thing about Pastor Boyd is that uh, I'm very unique in who I am. There, there is nobody
your hands and say glory. Come on. Open your mouth and say hallelujah. And listen. As you prepare to go back to your seat, put your arm around three people and tell them, neighbor, God said make ready. You're going to recover all. You're going to get back everything. Woo! long enough. Get ready to get it back. your Bible in your hand. Okay. 
Turn your Bible to the following scripture and repeat it after me, everybody. If you don't have a Bible, repeat these words after me. All over this temple. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. to be try to be nice for a few moments I, I know I know there is a powerful anointing in the house there's a powerful anointing in the house yokes are being destroyed hebo shakatabasaka hebo sita Brothers are being lifted. Hey, Boshi. Handori, Boshahata, Boshi, Dio. There are spirits you saw last week, you're not going to see no more. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. If y'all would. Just be nice. For, if you don't want to give me a half hour, just give me five minutes. Let me read a scripture in the way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of First Samuel, chapter number thirtieth. And it came to pass when David and his men was come to. Ziklag. Somebody say Ziklag. Oh, glory. Just lay your hand on your name and say, neighbor, God don't need no help. He's God all by himself. How about she cut up your little Hey, oh, she. 
Tell your neighbors, a neighbor, it is going to come to pass. The Lord Jesus made you a promise a few Sundays ago that he was not going to leave until he he did what he said he was going to do. So just tell your neighbor one more time, it shall come to pass. And it came to pass when David and his men would come to Ziglag on the third day. Somebody say the third day. That the Amalekites He had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitted Ziglag and burned it with fire. It had taken the women captive that were there within. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. How many folks know the devil can't do but so much yes. when you under his covering, brother? Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord said the devil took your stuff, but he couldn't do away with it. He gonna get it all back. Yes. Huh? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, yes Lord. The scripture that I had read just a moment ago in the Gospel according to St. John, it gives us an illustration of who we are. He said, we, we are the branches. But the problem now, we have a lot of dead branches on the vine. Don't get quiet now, come on, hallelujah. Lord gonna put some new sap in you today. You gonna learn that your strength don't come from natural sources. Mm. But it comes from the Lord. And I thank for me to be able to make that message today. I think it'd be a good idea for me to just work with David for a little while here this morning, praise God. He is a good example of what that is all about. We find here in this particular passage of scripture of First Samuel in chapter number 30, that David and his men were living at this time in the remote wilderness town of Ziglag. 
They had been away for a number of days, and now they were returning back home. And as they began to come in sight of their little town they were living in, they began to see tremendous smoke circling all over their place. And the closer they got, the more devastating the situation looked. Until pretty soon they were standing where their home used to be, but it was nothing but ashes there. What do you do when you got nothing else left? When everything is gone. Mm. What do you do when you get down and can't get up? Mm. What do you do when Dr. Feinstein said you got two months to live? You got to know that you are the branch, but you're connected to a vine. Mm. And I hear them say, if you abide in me, hear both shikha tapa and and, 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 and and my word abide in you. You just can't have the word in your, in your briefcase. And, and, in, and in your pocketbook. Mm. When you come to these kind of times, my friend, the word got to be in you. When the devil's tell you you're not going to make it, and he begin to show you times and areas in your life that demonstrate that. You got to know who God is. This story says that when David and his men arrived back on the scene and found out that everything was gone. And even taking his, the family away from them. He said they began to cry. How many folks have ever been in the kind of trouble that makes you cry? Mm. Go ahead with your deep shift. You good. Just read it. I want, I want them to hear, to read, to hear what the story said. It said they cried until they couldn't cry no more. Mmm. Mmm. When you're hurting like that, folks can't help you. And it said that men that David had with him were men that he had picked up out of the gutters and out of the trenches and made something out of them. Gave them a new life. But folks will love you. As long as you are on top, they will love you. But the same folks that you hope to get to the top. Can I go ahead and preach for about two minutes? That's all. When your test come, mm, they will turn their back on you. The Bible said that the men that he had with him, they began to talk among themselves. They said, somebody is responsible for this. Somebody has made this thing happen. 
And then they begin to say, yes, David, you are the man. You brought us here. You never talked about the time when he had lifted him up and made him talk to you. You brought us here. You got us in this mess. And the Bible said they were getting to pray for it, getting ready to do a number on David. It is something when you have folk that you think going to help you, turn against you, and they hurt you. Mm. That's when you got to know that you are in the vine, and the vine is in you. See, David had been somewhere. He had had some experience. He knew those lonely hours and nights he spent out there in the field with those sheep. See, sometimes the time you spend by yourself is the most valuable time in your life. When you cut the TV off, yes. put the phone on Do Not Disturb. Yes. And this is God's time. Yes. That's when David come to know that the Lord is my shepherd. Y'all gonna mess up here, come on. And I shall not want. He's making me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside still water. He restores. It may be gone, but he restores. Come on, I, I haven't forgotten that. I haven't forgotten that. I haven't forgotten that. Yeah, boy, she caught that boy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When darkness come, you got to know who your light is. The Lord is my light. In my salvation. Who? Whom shall I fear? Give all she cut up. Hallelujah. When cancer hits your body, and Dr. Feinstein gives you three months to live, you gotta know what happened at Calvary. Can I preach for both honey? You know that Judah went to Calvary. And you got to begin to thank him for the blood. Oh, somebody said the blood of Jesus. Come on, say the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Here goes, she cut that boy, she cut And by his stripes, yeah. I'm not talking about no radiation, brother. I said by his stripes, I am healed. I'm not taking no treatment, I'm coming for healing. Somebody here, they didn't know, you know God go heal you. Jump on your feet, turn around, sit back down. Say, I thank you for my healing. Go ahead. Say, I thank you for my healing. Tell him, I thank you for my healing. Hey! Hey! Now, now. Hey, boy, shot that type of Yes! Glory. Read me several verses. Let me go ahead and speak a word into your life today from beginning. Verse number seven, please, if you please. First Samuel, chapter 30, at verse seven. And David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, 
Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Oh. Oh, Somebody high five people and say, oh, 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 oh. I want about seven folks that is tuned into what I'm saying today. I want you to reach over and grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I'm about to experience the greatest recovery in my life. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. All this time that you have been going through, and when you best friend walked off and left you. When folks that you hope and when you needed help, they turned on you. There was somebody that did not leave you. His name is Jesus. He made you a promise, I will never leave you, not forsake you. David remembered the covenant God had made. Yes, yes. When trouble comes in your life, you got to have this word locked down into your yes. spirit, my friend. Knowing that God is not going to fail you. He's going to get you through every situation. I often tell folks, praise God, then in January year of 2000, when I hit that massive stroke, and I was paralyzed from my head to my feet, couldn't talk, couldn't walk, and they wheeled me out of my house on a, on a stretcher, took me to the hospital, and there I laid. And the doctor said, I will never be the same man again. See, I will never do what I'm doing now. But thank God, I was attached to the vine. I said, thank God, I was attached to the, the vine. I was not just in some religion, not some denomination, but I was attached to the vine.
This, 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 this. this is so good. Just let me read two verses. My God, I, I could quote it from the book. Hey, boy, Chisa. Glory. true vine and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. You are attached to the vine to bear fruit. Come on, hallelujah. He purged it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. Mm. Just don't come to Bethlehem and get your name on the book here. Get your name on the Lamb book and go. Abide in me. Somebody say abide in me. And I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. See, thank God I was in the vine. That's why I'm standing here today. Come on, hallelujah. There are many of you, all the stuff that you've been through, you would have never made it, but you was in the vine. Oh my God, come on from hallelujah. Whoa. Mm. Cause when you're in the vine, you can draw. Draw money from an empty bank account. You got to have money in there. This scripture says back in First Samuel, it said that when the men wanted to kill David, the Bible said David encouraged himself because he knew he was attached to the vine. When you're going through, my friend, you've got to have the word on the inside. Everybody say on the inside. On the inside. Everything will work out for your good. He knew how he had trusted God and went back to all of those times when he had to turn to God for his help. See, there's some time in life that only God can help you. You have to let him be there for you, praise God. And after David had encouraged himself, He said he went to the Lord and began to talk to him. He said, Lord, everything I had, you gave it to me. See, sometimes we forget where our help comes from. We forget our source. And when you forget our source, When this earth is sources shit out on you, you get bit out of shape. See, all that stuff that's going on down on Wall Street ain't gonna, ain't gonna affect you. Mm. Come on, somebody, how did it go? My help 
is in the Lord. My help come from the Lord. If Wall Street closed down, I'm on another street. Glory, glory, glory. I know who I'm a branch, but I'm attached to the vine. He said, Lord, it's all gone now. But you gave it to me. And shall I go after it? And Lord, wait a minute before you answer me. Don't answer me yet. Don't answer me yet. Because not only should I go after it, but if I go, I need to know what's going to happen. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Come on, come on. Oh, brother. If I go, God, how much of how much of I'm gonna get back? Can I get all of it back? Or I'm just gonna get a portion of it. But I heard the Lord. Oh my shakata the Lord. He said, go. Somebody said, go, 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 go. I know you feel like having a pity party, but there's no time to have no pity party there. He said, go. And you're not going to just get some. But you shall recover. Hallelujah. The Lord said, I know you know this is November. You just got one more month in 2011. But I made you a promise. I made you a promise. Not for 2012, I made you a problem for 2011. God can do more for you. In my early days, I used to say five minutes, but now I say one minute. Somebody live and say, Devil, Devil, get out of my face. Out of All, I All I need is one minute for God. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. know he's going to do it, go ahead and praise him. Yeah. have to be able to trust God when God's speaking your life until you go you got to be have the faith to go but I don't see no way pastor if you could see a way it wouldn't be no faith come on somebody how do you do When you're walking by faith, you call things that be not as though they were. (laughs) 
David went back to the book of Deuteronomy. Let me go there for just a few moments to you this morning. I don't want to, because uh, I feel like running this morning. I don't want to, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to, trying to stay in the court. Woo! There it goes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. seven people here that he took you down to nothing so he can show you something oh you come on come on honey. come on honey. I took you down hallelujah when I get through with you you gonna know that I am God Jehovah I'm Elohim. I'm the strong one. Yeah. I'm the one that take nothing and make something up. Get ready, get ready to be blessed like you've never been blessed before. Neighbor, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no song. Let me just let me go here for five minutes. I'm going then I'm going to pray for you. Let you go. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. And verse number four, and the Bible says what? Thou shalt not see thy brother's donkey or his ox fall down by the way. Deuteronomy 32. 32, pardon me. My God. Well, it happens like sometimes when you get happy. You hallelujah, get happy. hallelujah, my God. The Spirit takes over. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Higher, higher. 
When trouble comes, you know who your rock is. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had a church here. Yeah. David said, he's my rock, he's my rock. Here, yeah. she come. I don't fret because of evil doers. For I know there's so soon to be cut out. Oh, glory. But they that wait on the Lord, God made me a promise. If I just wait, I would mount up. Tell you this, a neighbor, I'm in my season of recovery. Oh, you got to tell me some authority that you believe that you come. Come on. I don't care what your law, you're going to get your health back. You're gonna get your home back, you're gonna get your family back, you're gonna get your money back, you're gonna get your back, you're gonna get your, get your ministry back. It's recovery time. God is 
used in your faith here this morning. Come on, so hallelujah. Look at Genesis chapter 49 and 24. Praise God. I ain't got much time, but I'm going to try to. And the Bible said. 49 and 4 of Genesis. Genesis, 20, Genesis 49 and 24. 24, pardon me. But his bow abode in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. We find David now. And while you're doing this, we go ahead and give me Exodus 17 and verse 4. We find David now with a group of men with him that had not did what he did. See, when you take it, folks, with you. To get your goods, you got to know who, who you're taking along. Amen. Come on, somebody. How do you do it? The Bible said David encouraged himself. Amen. But he had some men along with him who, who had not been encouraged, you see. And, she, and when you're going somewhere, you're not encouraged. It's easier for you to get frustrated and give up, you see. But David was walking in faith. He wasn't walking by sight. God had told him to go. Hallelujah. That's why sometimes you can't listen and try to explain to folks your assignment that you're on. You get them to God told me to go. That people say, God said it. Go ahead. Say, God said it. Woo. Oh. Oh. Glory. Oh. Exodus 17 and 4. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? See, sometimes when you're on God's assignment, you've got to be true enough attached to the vine. Amen. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Because folks can get you discouraged. Here Moses was, had obeyed God, went down into Egypt and stood in the presence of Pharaoh and told Pharaoh, God said, let my people go. And Pharaoh began to bargain with him. You got to watch the devil. For you about to get your deliverance. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The devil will always come and try to attract you to something. If you do this, I'll do this. You say, devil, get out of my face. I'm, I'm listening to God now. God told me to separate myself. God told me he would bring me up with a song. And I believe God. And I made God a promise to bring me up. I won't go in back. Mm. The Lord had to brought them out of Egypt and they got down to the Red Sea. And right away they he forgot what God told them. They only saw a condition. They did not see the word of God. Are you listen to me today. There are people sitting here now. You're looking at a condition. You're not looking at the word of God. God done made you a promise. And so you're looking at what God said. You're looking at the condition. 
God is greater than any condition in your life. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You may be down by the Red Sea today, but God can cut a highway in the wilderness. Come on. Hallelujah. The old folks used to sing a song. And they believed those words that they sung, praise God. He's my doctor in the sick room. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If you got Dr. Jesus, he never fails, you see. They had seen God open up that red sea and cut a highway to get them through. And then go back and take that same red sea and destroy the enemy. You're not listening to me. If everything that God would bless you with, he'll take it and get fucked off of your back. Destroy it now. But here in Exodus 17 and verse number 4, here these folks now were were ready to kill Moses. But Moses knew who he was. He said, I'm a branch, but I'm in the vine. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. You got to know who you are and what you're doing, praise God. Let me just close with this. I'm going to finish this at another time. There. We find now that David is on his way to recover his goods. God just said, I'm going to bring it. He said, get up and go get it. And some of the men that were with him had gotten fatigued and had given up. So David said, let them rest, but I'm going on. Sometimes you got to keep on when other folks stop. Come on, somebody. I'm telling them if you're going to get your goods back. Come on, somebody. How to do it. You can't quit because somebody's quitting. God told me to go. Look at three people and say, God told me to go. And actually, they said, actually, they said, what you think I'm going to do? God told me to go, and I'm going. If everybody on my road stay here, I'm going. Because he told me if I go, I would recover all, praise God. Everything that God sets up for you, he's got that plan already laid out for you, baby, before you get into it. See, your trouble, you sitting there trying to figure out God. If you got a God you can figure out, you got the wrong kind of God. God, I said, I can't figure him out. He's too much for me. That's why when he speaks, I just listen to him. Let me read this one more scripture. May I praise God? And then I'm going to, I just want to finish. I'm going to read to pray for you now. First Samuel chapter 23 and verse 13. Glory to the Lord. Begin reading that scripture for me, praise. First Samuel 23 and 13. Praise God. Then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed out of Kailah and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Kailah, and he forbear to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. Listen, listen, listen. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. 
And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find thee. And thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee. This is why David could trust God. See, he had been in those kind of predicaments before. There are some of you sitting here now. The little stuff that you're going through now is preparing you for the bump in the road that's going. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You're going to know when you get that the, the, the God is able. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. That's why he did not get frustrated when all those men quit on him and kept going, praise God. And the, the Bible said that there was a young man that was with those people that had assassinated David in his place had gotten sick. See, God got all kinds of ways of doing things to get your victory for you. And they had given up on him, but they didn't know they left him there for David, you see. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You don't know who was laying by the wayside for you. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And when the widow told him, inquired who he was, what he was doing, he told me, he said, I got sick on the way in my leader threw me aside and told me I could not go no further. And David began to go, said, where did he go? And what road did he go? How long had he been gone? He gave David the whole outline. You can't do God. And David began to go forward in, into the direction he had given him. And they were so excited what, that he had taken all of David's Belonging that they were having a, a party for themselves. But sometimes, you know, when you touch God's stuff, brother, you got to be careful. Huh? It all come back home. There was, there was, the Bible said that they were rejoicing. The Amalites what they had required from him. But David went into their camp and captured all of those men and slew them and took back everything. Not only his stuff, but he took their stuff. See, God, God is not gonna just give you back your stuff. What did God tell Israel when he got ready? He said, I'm going to bring you out, and when I bring you out, you're not coming out empty-handed. When you stay with God during tough time, God don't forget you, boy. See, God said, you kept coming to church. You kept paying your tithes. You kept giving offerings. Now, I'm not just going to give you back what the devil took from you. I'm going to take some of his stuff and give you back to you. Come on. Come on. The Bible said they went back home with so much stuff you could hardly carry. It. God is getting ready to overflow your <laughs> bank accounts. Hallelujah. All that you see happening out there in the economy now is going to favor you in the house now. Come on, hallelujah. There are some houses out there that God got for you. Glory to God. Just stay faithful and trust Him. And as the Lord bless you, don't forget where your blessing comes from. They recovered everything and more beside. And on their way back, when they got to the men that had stopped by the wayside, fella, those other men that went with David, they said, we're not gonna give them anything but their family. We'll give them their family back. But we ain't giving them none of our goods, you see. None of the spoil, we're not gonna give them. David said, no, you can't do like that. 
no matter how much God bless you, don't forget where your blessing comes from. Too. God bless you so you can bless somebody else. You're not in this thing just for yourself. You're in here for the Lord. And as you go in faith, and keep the commandments of God. I don't care how dark it get out there, a light gonna shine in your life. I know we are seeing things we've never seen before. We are hearing things we've never heard before. But God is your God. Don't let nobody tell you that God has changed. He's still a miracle working God. And he's ready to work a miracle in your life. Everything that you need, God has prepared it for you. If you have the faith to walk in obedience and submit yourself to him, you're going to get it all. Come on, somebody. Lift your hands down. I'm going to get it all. Put your Bible down. Get on your feet. Put your hands together for two minutes. Just begin to praise the Lord. Come on and thank you. Come on and thank you. Thank you. Praise him. Glory. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor. I'm learning, I'm learning. How, to how to trust God. Come on, say it one more time. I'm learning how to trust God. In the midst of David's greatest test, he never gave up. I don't know who you are today. God brought you here today. But God told me to tell you, don't give up. I'm still God. I said, God told me to tell you, don't give up. I'm still God. I haven't changed. I am the God of, of David. If I did it for David, I'll do it for you. In his distress, he relied upon the word of God. And my friend, you have to learn in this time now to walk by God's word and not by condition. You can't let what's happening in your home, on your job, out there in the general public, to cause you to become blind to what God has said. Remember now, David had got back to his home and everything he had was gone, burnt up. His wife and children was gone. But the thing that he did not realize that God was not going to let the enemy do but so much to him. They took his wife but they couldn't hurt him, you see. Many of your children, the devil taking your children, but you're going to get them back. I said, you're going to get them back. The devil will not be able to hurt them. He said, and my soul is greatly dismayed and worried. Every night I make my bed swim. Sometimes you have to go to bed at night and your tears give you a shower. You don't have to go to the shower. You cry your way to sleep. 
But God gonna send an angel to you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. When Elijah gave up and he got fearful and because Jezebel said she was going to kill him. Same Elijah, he went to the mountain and saw fire come down. And a few days later, he let fear grip him. See, you cannot let fear grip your has a destination. Walk in faith, not in fear. Knowing that God said it, he's going to do it. He began to run for his life. He ran for days, doesn't eat it. And he was so tired, he just went into the cave and laid down. And the Lord God came around and asked him, said, what are you doing here? I sent you on a journey. What are you doing here? But God loves you. He never gives up on you. He never gives up on you. He didn't bring you to Bethlehem to beat you up. He brings you here to lift you up. God sent an angel to prepare a meal for Elijah. And for three days he came and cooked and prepared the meal for him. There are some of you after this day, you will never spend a, another lonely night. God said, I'm sending an angel comfort to you now. Trust me. I'm going to take you where I promise you. I'm going to do for you what I told you I was going to do. This year will not close out until I've done it for you. Because I said it. You didn't give up. I'm not going to give up on you. What a relationship. When you have a relationship with God, Jehovah. And his son, Jesus Christ. As I close this service today, I want you to go down this place knowing that you have the victory. Yeah. Lay your hand on your shoulder and say, I, I have, have the victory. In the name of Jesus. While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. There may be somebody here today that's not saved. You've never walked the path of salvation. You came to church. Some of you even joined the church. But building does not save nobody. Religion don't save. Only Jesus saves. Yes. Just grab your neighbor's hand and tell them, say, Jesus saves. Jesus saves. If you're saved, grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Jesus saves. If you're here in the next few moments, and you have not been born again, I do not want you to leave this temple in a state that you're in now. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand and said, Pastor, I need prayer. I'll take time today, my friend, and I will walk you through the connection. 
you will leave your connected back to your creator. Think about it. You must be born again. A man cannot even see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. You have to be born into the kingdom. Today, right now, if that's you, my friend, and you have not been born again, I don't want you to look around at nobody. Don't look, don't just think about yourself. If the Lord will come right now, well, would I spend eternity? If you believe in good and bad, right and wrong, day and night, then there's a heaven and a hell, my friend. But Jesus died so you could live. Get ready, one. All you gotta do is just lift that hand up. He gonna do the rest for you, my friend. Religion don't save nobody. Denomination doesn't save. Only Jesus saved. Get ready, get ready. Two. There's not a friend like Jesus. He's the best friend you'll ever have, my friend. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In your darkest hour. This is the best time in your life. Come on, three. Raise that hand. Is it you? One person. Pastor, I won't check. I want that I want the relationship. Let that hand go up. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. There are people in hell right now because they were ashamed. But today, my friend, let it be your day of salvation. He said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Come on, pray, church. Pray, pray, pray. If you pray, the people will come. If you pray, if you pray, they will come. Pray, 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 pray. 
pray, pray. Leave it alone. Take it out of your hands and put it in the master's hands. your hands and hallelujah. When we say born again, put me, listen to pastor, when God made man, he put himself in man. And man was to be live and live in him. But Adam soul himself out to the devil. And when he did this, when he disobeyed God, the spirit that was in Maine died. Maine kept on living. But the spirit died. So that means that every time a person, every person that comes into